If you like the strategic challenge of war games but are sick of tired tanks, boring bombers, and manuals that read like Ollie Knorr's Guide to a Kinder, Gentler Totalitarian State, relief in the form of hordes of nasty fantasy creatures is soon to arrive. Dark Legions, Silicon Knight's newest contribution to SSI's catalog, is a combined strategy and action feast that should be hitting the shelves in early summer. You get a break from the standard war game units in Dark Legions. Here you build your army from wizards, illusionists, conjurers, orcs, berserkers, phantoms, trolls, seers, templars, water and fire elementals, thieves, vampires, wraiths, demons, and shapeshifters. In the age-old AD&D tradition, each army type has its own list of stats, and each has at least one special power. So yes, even the lowly thief is useful. You create your army by buying creatures. As you might expect, you get to choose the size of your bankroll, but don't go crazy. Since your opponent gets to spend the same amount, you can also set the size of the map you'll play on. These two features combine to allow you to choose a quick game, an epic campaign, or something in the middle. I hope, however, that the final version of this game will let you know how much each unit will cost before you buy it. A terrain editor wouldn't exactly hurt either. The fighters themselves aren't the only weapons you can arm yourself with. Traps and rings can also be purchased to help you inflict pain and humiliation on your foe. Traps are invisible ones placed and can do anything from teleporting an enemy halfway across the battlefield to driving them insane. Rings are distributed amongst your units to give them sizable bonuses in areas such as power and life rejuvenation. This is where most of the game is played. Players move their armies around the 3D battlefield in a manner any veteran of Battle Chess or Archon Ultra should be familiar with. A large overhead map is also available to allow you to keep track of games played on large battlefields. Naturally, terrain affects your army's movement and water is passable only by a water elemental. On this screen, the tactical battle will be fought and you will quickly discover which characters are most useful in this phase of play. When one army piece is challenged by another, the game shifts to an overhead view for an arcade combat sequence. This is very similar to the fighting found in SSI's own Archon Ultra, except here all the characters respond to your control. The combat is very well done and you will quickly see that the most powerful characters on the tactical screen are about as intimidating as Michael Jackson in a brawl. The graphics and sound are captivating throughout the game. The characters are entertaining as they walk around the tactical screen, although they did move very slowly. Luckily, these animations can be toggled off. Certain special effects, like the wizard's ice bolt, the fire elemental's suicide explosion, and the conjurer's summoning of extra forces are especially well done. After playing this version, I can't wait to get my hands on the finished game. With Dark Legions, it seems that SSI has cleaned up Archon Ultra's failings and given that game a second chance to live up to its potential. Hardcore wargamers are likely to be turned off by Dark Legions arcade sequences, but it will be their loss. The game is very flexible, allowing you to play a quick monster mash or plan out a carefully managed war. Unless something gets cosmically screwed up between now and its release, count on Dark Legions to be one of the stars of 1994.